standing in honor of the reading of the gospel, which comes from the first chapter of Luke, verses 67 through 80, the prophecy of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins." By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew, became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. And this is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We'll start out with a quick poll this morning. Raise your hand if every time you've ever expected something to happen, it has happened just exactly as you expected it to. (laughs) Expectations are rarely fulfilled. Sometimes expectations are exceeded by the outcomes, that is sure. Sometimes expectations are not met um, or are not what the opposite of exceeded. By the way, there is no single word that is officially recognized as the opposite of exceeded, a bit of trivia that I learned this week. So instead of trying to find words to fit there, I'm just going to use the word subseeded. <laughs> so sometimes expectations are exceeded and sometimes they are subseeded. <laughs> I love inventing words. <laughs> There are certain expectations that go with this time of year, aren't there? Certain expectations about Advent and Christmas. There are events that have to happen in just one certain way or they don't count. (laughs) There's decorations that have to go in just one certain spot in the house because they've always gone in that spot. I see spouses nudging one another now. Uh, You've had this conversation. There are, uh, there are certain songs that you just have to hear or it's not really Christmas. There are gifts that you have to buy. That gift that just perfectly uh, symbolizes your relationship with the person that you're giving it to. All for $19.95 on sale today. That stuff's good. It's good to celebrate this season. It's good to participate in the decorations and the music and the events. It's all fun an important part of Advent, but what happens when our expectations about that stuff are (laughs) subseded? What happens when our expectations about Christmas are not met? Sometimes I think we place so much pressure on ourselves to attain the perfect Christmas that we end up so anxious and so distracted by these less important things, so exhausted by trying so hard to meet these expectations that we miss the grace of the season altogether. Expectations are rarely fulfilled. Grace always is. The prophets remind us of what God's grace looked like. The prophets remind us of what God's grace looks like with a simple and profound image, the righteous branch, a righteous branch that grows where it is least expected. 
For the prophet Jeremiah, the nation of Israel was in turmoil. There was a bit of an identity crisis going on. They felt like God had abandoned them. The leaders of the nation had made unjust decisions one after another, decisions that were self-serving and not for the common good. The result was that the nation had been utterly destroyed. Jerusalem had been leveled. The temple, the palace, the city walls flattened. And the people had been scattered The people did not know what to expect at this point. Their expectations were all over the place. And when you don't know what to expect, fear takes over. And the prophets, not just Jeremiah, but the whole list of them, were continually reminding the people of God's priorities, of God's grace. Continually reminding the people of their identity as God's people and reminding them that God's promises were still true. God will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. The situation may seem hopeless, they said, but the prophetic word is strong and clear. The days are surely coming, says the Lord. The days are surely coming. You see, Jeremiah's vision of the future is not an abstract idea. It is concrete. It is tangible. He talks about there being being weddings again. There being worship services again. He talks about farmers in the field, shepherds watching over their flocks. That will happen again. This is not just empty words. Oh, it'll be fine. Just hang in there. These are tangible and concrete images of hope for the people in a in a tumultuous time in their history. In the midst of turmoil, when we ourselves might be wondering who we are, when we don't know what to expect, when even our faith has become unrecognizable, our relationship with God itself is in question. Even then, God is still present God is still gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. No, our expectations are very rarely fulfilled, but God's grace always is. The story of John the Baptist is a story of expectations that are subseded and then exceeded. A story about how God's grace goes beyond our expectations. Because you see, Elizabeth and Zechariah, they were righteous. They were good people. They were living as they were supposed to live. They did everything right. They followed God's laws. They expected to be blessed with a family. They expected to have children, but they didn't. And they were now old (laughs) or as the King James Version says it, they were now well stricken in years. (laughs) And here they were, well stricken in years, wanting and expecting a child, and they didn't have one. And, And now a message had come to them that they would indeed have a child and that he had a special role to play in preparing people for the coming of the Savior. Unbelievable. Zechariah got this message while he was at work one day. He was a priest. He was in the temple, and it was his turn to go into the the center of the temple, the Holy of Holies, the place where only one priest at a time was allowed to go. It was a great honor. And in that special place in the middle of the temple, he was visited by an angel, and he was scared. And the angel said, don't be afraid, Zach. I got some news for you. You're going to have a kid. He's going to be amazing. He's going to prepare the way for the Savior. And Zach said, maybe you haven't heard, angel, but we are well stricken in years. And that doesn't seem likely to me. And the angel says, I am Gabriel. And I am sent to you with this message from God. And because you are unable to believe it, you will be unable to speak until the child is born. 
And that came to pass. Elizabeth uh, gave birth, and everyone was asking, what is this baby's name going to be? Maybe you should name him Charlie or, or Fred. And Elizabeth said, no, he's going to na- be named John. I said, John, there's no connection there. There's no connection to John. How come, how come John? And Elizabeth said, well, go check with Zach. Zechariah comes out with a tablet and writes on it. His name is John and holds it up. And at that moment is then able to speak again. Expectations succeeded and then exceeded. God made a promise to Zechariah and Elizabeth, and God delivered on that promise. Fulfillment of the promise was unexpected, but by the grace of God it came to be. The name John means God is gracious. Expecting the perfect Christmas may be causing some of us to worry about, among other things, deliveries. Deliveries. Is it going to be delivered on time? Will the gift that we want to buy that special person even be in stock? Will it get here? Remember this. When it comes to the grace of God, God delivers on time, every time. Neither rain nor snow, nor heat, nor gloom of night can stay the grace of God from the swift completion of its appointed realms. So if we know this about God, if we know that God is faithful to God's divine promises, the question then becomes, where do our unreasonable, unhealthy expectations come from? What's the source of of this anxiety and stress, these expectations for the perfect Christmas season. The source of our expectations matters. Is my expectation grounded in God, in God's desires, in God's priorities? Are my expectations grounded in grace? Or have I allowed my expectations to be shaped by by something else? Back in the day, we used to say better homes and gardens. <laughs> Remember that? You know, they used to make magazines out of paper. <laughs> Today, it's Pinterest. We allow our Christmas expectations to be shaped by Pinterest, and if I can just make my Christmas look like Pinterest says it should look, then we'll all be. What is the source of our expectations? The first step to go beyond expectations, is to realize where they come from. I learned this lesson years ago. Um, in Kansas City, I had a, a life group. We, we didn't call it a life group then. We called, we called it a covenant group. But it's the same function as a life group that we have here at Campbell, the small group that meets on a regular basis and holds, each, holds one another accountable and encourages one another. And I I, uh, met with them on a regular basis. It was a fantastic group, very open, very transparent, very trusting. And it was from them that I learned a very important lesson. See, I have, uh, at that time, and even still today, I have this expectation uh, for doing things really, really well. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I want to be be the best I can be and do the best I can. and um, that causes a lot of anxiety in my life, a lot of times, a lot of stress. And, and uh, going over and over what, what I could have done better, what I could have done differently, um, leads to heartburn, and, and my blood pressure goes up, and all kinds of physical symptoms of that, of that mental stress. And so I was expressing this, and I, I talked to this, my group about, you know, I just feel these expectations on me from, from my peers and from my congregation and from my parents, and I just feel these expectations to exceed and excel. And I, had, I felt them my whole life. I felt them in high school, college as well. And my group, my life group, helped me see that it wasn't the people around me who had those expectations of me, it was coming from within me. It was coming from within myself. I was being too hard on myself. And after they kicked my butt, they, they offered me grace, 
or maybe in the process of kicking my butt, they offered me grace. Grace to know that those expectations were unrealistic and unhealthy were causing all kinds of problems. Now, I still have to address that. I still, that's a part of who I am. But I had to know, first of all, the source of those expectations. And isn't it interesting how mind, body, and spirit all connect together here? Like what I was feeling mentally about these expectations had a physical symptom, that is heartburn and high blood pressure, and yet it was a spiritual truth that helped me overcome it, namely the grace of God. The people in my life group were a means of grace for me in that moment. Because expectations, wherever they come from, expectations are rarely fulfilled, but grace always is. And so this season, for these Next four Sundays, please be aware of what your expectations are. Please be aware of where they come from. And please be aware of how they are affecting you. Remember, the season of Advent should reduce your stress, not add to it. (laughs) Jeremiah saw a, a righteous branch beginning to grow from where it was least expected. What are you expecting to see? Zechariah heard an impossible promise from God. What are you expecting to hear? The good news of this season is that Jesus was born to embody the grace of God, to be grace incarnate in the world, to make grace more than an abstract concept, to make it tangible and present. Throughout this season of Advent, As we prepare for Christmas, may we always remember expectations are rarely fulfilled. Grace always is. Let us pray. Holy and living God, by your grace, by your grace, we live. Help us, God, to be the people you call us to be, to be the church that you desire. We know that you always deliver on your promises. May that knowledge fill us with love and light and grace during this holy season and beyond. In Jesus' name, by the power of your spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.